Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in, Winning Cures Everything Friday show. It's time to talk about some coaches. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we got a whole lot to discuss. Holy crap, do we have some big news drop in Starkville, Mississippi. We uh we thought it was going to be Sark Vegas, and it ain't at all. It's not even close. It, uh, the Pirate is coming down to Mississippi, and we're pretty excited about this, right? Yeah, he's here. That's a, he is he's here. He's uh, you, he has landed. Did you see the video of him with the like ringing the cowbell when he got off the plane? Yeah, he looked like he was holding a sword. It was nice. fantastic. So yeah, all of it was great. I was uh, I, I was excited about it. So it's it's a lot of fun. This is going to be a very fun rivalry. Um, let's go ahead and give you the rundown. Of course, winningcureseverything dot com is the website. Uh, All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, uh, everything is over there. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We are on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, Make sure you leave a comment. Tell us what you think about all these coaching moves and whatnot. uh, We'd love to hear what you think. Also, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you leave a nice review over at Apple Podcast, a five-star written review. Leave something funny. Tell us what you think about the show. Uh, leave some questions. We like to answer those, of course. We'll uh, we'll answer them on the show. Uh, the format will be, we're recording every Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night, so you will get a podcast, I believe, every day during the week. Uh, but we'll, we'll go on with that as we get through the football season. Uh, but we'll still have our picks and everything like that. But we'll, we'll kind of transition more into college basketball, etc. So, uh, the show, as always... Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them along with everything else that they've got going on down there at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and fire into this. I, I want to talk about uh, everything that is going on. So the first one, before we get into the, uh, into the coaching roundup, Jake Fromm announced that he is leaving for the NFL draft. Do you think that this is a smart move for him? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. It looks like he's going to have a new offensive coordinator again next year, maybe. Um, and and I just don't think that it's wise for – I don't know that his numbers are going to get any better. And I also don't know that Kirby's going to allow an OC to come in here and let him rip. So, with that being said, absolutely. And then the other reason is, is – I think he's the second best quarterback that's healthy and actually going to be able to compete for a starting job next year out of this draft. I yeah. like him better than Justin and and Tua we think is going to have to sit out the entire year. Now while Tua's going to probably go earlier and be a project, uh we don't know that for certain. I think that's Fromm true. is a hell of a talent. He gets in the combines, he competes at everything. He could impress some people. He could wow some people, and he could easily be the second quarterback taken in this draft. Yeah, after after his second season, everybody was talking about him being a first round quarterback. It guaranteed he's going first round, all that kind of mess. And then you had this season when they switched OCs, and he can't afford to go through another season like that. No, nope. um, they got they got they got offensive linemen transferring out. Of course, the transfer didn't happen until after he decided to leave. Yeah. But they're they're going to end up having to run a new a, another a third offensive system in his three years. I just think, man, I wouldn't trust my future in 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 uh in Kirby's hands. I just wouldn't. Not as a quarterback. Maybe maybe as a defensive lineman, linebacker, secondary guy, probably not as a quarterback. <laughs> I, I think I agree with you. Uh, DeAndre Swift has already announced he's gone. Uh, you're losing your your best wide receiver in yep. uh, in Cager, and you know Pickens looks promising, but if that's the only thing you have to work with, I mean you you do have other fresh. Pickens also in. got issues, man. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, I mean that's the other thing. How many games you trust him to be on the field for? Because that guy's got problems. Yeah, he's he's got some. I mean, you everybody saw him throw down with uh, with that Georgia Tech player. And that so, was after coming off of a suspension already. Yeah, I mean, it, like he, it's not it's not like he was a choir boy up until then. That's true. That's true. You got a valid point. All right, now let's uh, let's move into the the coaching changes in college. Uh, obviously, what we led off the show with. Let's talk about Mike Leach going to Starkville. Um, now, I wrote an article two years ago 
and and we discussed it with Gary Parish, et cetera, where I said that, you know, Mike Leach would never get one of these big jobs. And I think I put in there that he would not get an SEC job. And obviously I was wrong about that. Now I am excited that I was wrong. Um, but I think it took a whole lot of things going wrong for Mississippi State to get to this point. Now, it shouldn't have. There's no reason that this job should have gone to Joe Judge before it went to Mike Leach. There's no reason that it should have gone to Billy Napier before it went to Mike Leach. Uh, I think it's a, a fantastic hire for a program that will always be considered under the, the top four teams in this division, right? You've got Auburn, Alabama, LSU, and Texas A&M that are always going to spend more money, et cetera. And Not just more money, but... They've got more hundred resources. million dollars more than states going to spend. Right, and and on top of that, Mississippi State is the closest uh, of any university to Alabama. They are eighty miles away from Tuscaloosa, so they will always be in that shadow. And you had to do something. Like the situation was dire at this point. You've got Lane Kiffin who is stirring up all of this excitement in Oxford, and. How funny is it that all of this comes from a guy fake peeing in an end zone, right? Like, it's just it, so many things happen because of that one play. And it's not all because of that, but that's what kind of got everything in motion. And as far as a hire goes, I mean, this is a home run. You want to yes. talk about stirring up excitement in a fan base? Uh, they... They already, before they even took off on the plane, had Mike Leach record a message to go out and robocall all of their donors and get them to start piling up money. And it's working. Season tickets are going on sale soon. Like they are, it, donations are already up a bunch and they hadn't even had the press conference yet. So this was a fantastic move. Uh, I got to, hats off to John Cohen. I mean, we'll see if it works. You know, I mean, it's so ridiculous that he has fallen into this. The like, it's you're. I'm excited about it. You know, I love Leach. I think he's a top five college football coach in, in the game, and and I don't know that he's ever gotten the true accolades because he's always at these smaller schools. He's yeah. always. I mean, Mississippi State is not Washington State or Texas Tech. But it's pretty damn close it's, to it in comparison the same, to the rest of the conference. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you you go from uh, you go from Lubbock to Pullman to Starkville. Starkville, they're all pretty similar. You I know. mean, Starkville is a hell of a lot bigger than those other two places. Ag agreed, but but only because of where it is, right? That's and, right. And that's it's right. In the SEC. Oh, he he's never he's never been in an area where he could walk outside and get local Mississippi talent. I know Texas talent is big, but Texas talent has every school in the world trying to grab well, it, and, and, and Mississippi talent just doesn't have that. And he was in Lubbock. It was on. The, oh yeah, the other he side. was in the toilet of the state. Yeah. It's, it's when it comes to bit. academic institutions and where people want to <laughs> spend their college years. Now, a lot of that has changed, by the way. Yes. I mean, people, you can recruit in Texas State. The world has gotten smaller since Leach was there. God, I mean, that was a decade ago. So, um, super excited about him because I believe in him and I have been a worshiper and a follower of him. There's no coach that I love in college football as we stand right now outside of one Lester Miles and Edward Ordron that I love more than, than, than Mike Leach. That has, that has been abundantly clear. And I've made it clear. If you want my fandom, if you want my support, if you want all of me, you hire Leach and you get all of it. And, and Starville did it. Not that they did it to get me, but they should, they should be excited <laughs> about that because they used to shit all over them. And, uh, and now I'll stop doing that. Um, I, I'll take a few more shots in the sense of John Cohen, what are you doing? What, this is a guy that just doesn't have a plan. I think he wakes up every day and he thinks, what should I do today? Okay. <laughs> and, and if that doesn't work, he's going to go to bed. He's not going to think about tomorrow. He's just going to wake up tomorrow and see what pea brain idea hits him. And I, I swear to God, it just happened to work out that, that he hit and he got lucky and he hit Pater. Because if you're going to go after a man like Leach, you don't even consider – you don't even consider a man like Napier or Jeff Monken or all these other guys that you were interviewing, Sarkeesian, and 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 things of that nature until you have the answer from Leach. 
there was something interesting Stephen Godfrey actually shared out earlier. Um, let's see. Did it, uh, all right, so first off, he said, does anyone in Mississippi remember Ole Miss hired DJ Durkin this week? Uh, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, he said, by the way, this all ends with Gardner Minshew as Mississippi State's head coach one day. Uh, no, here's so this was the most interesting part of this hire. Uh, multiple sources confirmed MSU and some other P5 schools this cycle uh, were assisted by a third-party firm that measured social media reaction to rumored and leaked candidates. Leach scored high positive. God bless college football. If that has anything to do with why you are hiring a coach, um, yeah, I mean, you got problems. Now, obviously, you want to excite the fan base, but your social media following is such a small, small pinprick of what your actual fan base is. Like that, I said, there, his process, their process is so flawed, and he, and he still struck gold. Do you think Ole Miss used that same process? <laughs> No, no, I don't at all, actually. No, I, I, I wonder if maybe they did because of the excitement that Kiffin brought. No, like, I disagree the, with that. And the reason Kiffin, I, Kiffin brings a little bit of baggage with him and stuff of that nature. Leach brings none of that. Agree. Well, it Leach bring, he okay, so it's not baggage, per se. But there are some issues. There's some red flags. that There are no issues, and there are no red flags, Gary. There is a reason why Mississippi State went after Joe Judge and Billy Napier before they ever went to Mike Leach. There's a reason Arkansas yes, hired Yes, because Sam the Pittman. person that handled these things are not he doesn't have a plan, he's not good at it. When, he's just not good at his job. Okay, so when I say red flags, I mean red flags for the administrators, for these people that are making the decisions. You but those I, part, those people are wrong. You, those people are wrong if they see that as a red flag. They've always been wrong, but you and I have talked about this in the past and yes, they are typically wrong about these things. So it is what it is, but looking at it from that side, that's where that that's how we get to this point, to where Leach is kind of a last ditch effort to get everybody excited. Now I will say this, um, he has done things at Texas Tech and at Washington State that have have not been done before. Now obviously Washington State has been to Rose Bowls, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what I am curious about with this, can his staff recruit? Like, I'm curious who he's going to put on his staff. He's, he's going to get some high school guys, um, high school coaches and whatnot to come in, and he's got to get some guys that are familiar with the area. Um, but on top of that, I, they may not be good for a couple of years. This roster is not built for what he wants to do, so I'm hoping that state fans are much more patient with him than they were with Moorhead um, because we, we saw the vitriol from the fans just after year one, and it was all on Moorhead. It was his fault. But if you if you see this moving in a direction where you know if they only win four games next year something like that, this which, is not going to happen. I, I mean he he went three and nine at Washington State. Like I, they're losing a lot of talent this year. That, Gary, that you Mullen work under the in. assumption that he always recruits like everybody else, and he's just going to go out there and get a bunch of freshmen. They're all going to be real young next year, and they're not going to be good. That, that's not how Mike Leach builds a team ever. Every year he goes to JUCOs and he just gets transfer kids. Every year. That's 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 the star portion of his programs. He yeah, just goes to JUCO. You think you think the quarterback on the roster that got his got his face broken is gonna be his starting quarterback next year? No. Because I do not. I do not. Actually, I think there's some JUCO kid out there that's gonna get a call tomorrow and his ass gonna be in startable in the next week or two. Um let me – so Bruce Feldman actually said something about that. So the guy that um, – the guy that is playing quarterback for Mississippi State next year, like the freshman, uh, Will Rogers, he arrived – Is this the kid that got his face broken? No, no, no. That's Gary this is the Schroeder. kid that played in the bowl game? No, Tommy Stevens was a senior. He's gone. Uh, okay. This is a, a true freshman. He's, he's a brand-new recruit. Uh, freshman oh, he'll be a freshman. Yeah, freshman quarterback Will Rogers arrived on okay. campus the day after Joe Moorhead was fired, now gets to play in the system that was literally built for him. His dad, Wyatt, coached Gardner Minshew, and Leach was the only Power 5 coach besides Mississippi State to offer him. Pretty interesting, huh? Yeah. So, it it might take a little bit because the rest of the roster is not built for what he wants to do. But I think he will get there. 
Like he I think will so make much them... of what he does is scheme. Oh, None yeah. of those guys are great talents at Washington State. There's a reason that nobody outside of Gardner went to the NFL. None of those guys are great talent. No, it's no, all scheme. Not. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all misdirection, and and coaching just seems to not be able to catch up to it all the time. No, I, I agree with you. I agree. Let's see. I'm, and the I'm, day of great defenses in the SEC have kind of gone the way of the dodo. Now you're right. I mean, about LSU that. and Alabama were the powerhouse defensive pro, and Auburn were the powerhouse defensive programs. And this side of the field, Auburn is still trying to play that way as we currently speak. But the other two, yes, they have good defenses. But but they're trying to hang fifty, just like Leach is going to try and do. Now you're you're a hundred percent right about that. Um, I'm looking at Texas Tech. Uh, the guy that coached at Texas Tech before Leach was, I think, Spike Dykes, if I can find it. Um, but yeah, it the, Texas Tech was built a lot like State was, and and Leach came in and immediately started winning there. He went seven and six. Seven and five, then had his first nine win season in two thousand two. Um, but at, at Washington State, he went three and nine his first year, six and seven his second year, three and nine his third year, and then it was nine and four, eight and five, nine and four, eleven and two, and this year was a six and seven season. Um, and I wish I could find it. I know he's he was also a much coach. younger coach. I mean, Jesus, how far ago was that? That was fifteen years ago, Gary. Uh, at Texas Tech, I mean, he started in 2000 at Texas Tech. So that was All right. That was that was, was, 20, that was years ago. 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He came in and started winning immediately. Uh, okay, so Spike Dyke, uh, Spike Dykes, excuse me, was um, let's see, he went nine and three at Texas Tech in '95, then seven and five, six and five, seven and five, six and five, and then Leach went seven and six, seven and five, nine and five, eight and five, eight and four, blah 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 blah. Uh, all the way up until 2008 when he had Crabtree and whatnot, and, uh, and they got ranked all the way up to number one. But um, I, he could win right off the bat, but... I'm not saying he's going to win the West, okay? No, no, no. I'm just I, saying I'm just, if he wins four games, that's a failure, and I don't foresee that. I am curious about the schedule. I mean, you think Arkansas is going to wake up tomorrow and just be a great program? No, 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 no. But it, it, that schedule works out pretty damn well for them next year. I mean, six wins is kind of easy. All right, so here's here's what they have next year. They have New Mexico, all right, so 1-0. At North Carolina State, yeah, we'll say 2-0. Arkansas, 3-0. Then you've got Tulane at home, which That'll be a tough one. could be interesting. You've got Texas A&M at home. You've got at Alabama, at LSU, Auburn, Missouri, at Kentucky, Alabama A&M, and at Ole Miss. So, All right, so that's six wins right there, easily. Easily, and I and I had them losing to Tulane. They're beating Missouri. All right, they're so beating, if you get those first three. They're beating Kentucky, unless Kentucky drastically does something at the quarterback position. And then you got Alabama A&M, and that would be six, I guess. So, okay. So I mean, that's I, having them lose the Iron Bowl, the Egg Bowl. And still with six wins, I think. And that's with losing the the Tulane game. So if they win Tulane and they lose Kentucky, they still got six wins. Okay, okay. I mean, I could see it. Now, I could also see the North Carolina State game going sideways. Uh, obviously, Tulane could But be all tough. of those games aren't going to go sideways. Yes, I could see some of them, but they're not going to lose them all. I mean, I, at, at Kentucky could be interesting. Um, and then, you know, I don't know what Missouri's going to be like. I, I couldn't Missouri's going to be trash. What are you talking about? I mean, you're probably right. I don't. I just don't know anything about Eli Drinkwitz, but I also don't know what Leach is going to do at Mississippi State. So I'll, I'll go and yes, give him you do. that. You know exactly what. Th- that, that's the, that's the thing, Gary. You're just saying things, but they don't make sense. You know exactly. What do you mean you don't know what he's going to do? He's going to do the same thing he did the last two places. He's going to have a high flying offense. Uh, yeah, but it takes a little bit of time to be able to build that. Like State's roster is not built for the air raid. I, we we just disagree. I think you can pass any time. I think it takes a lot of time to learn to run the ball. But I think it takes years to develop a run game. But anybody with great scheme can go find wide receivers and fast running backs, which State's got probably on the roster somewhere. And, and, and those guys can catch the ball and learn the route tree. And that's all it is. That's all it is. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I would like you to mean be to wrong. tell me the pl- the talent that he has at Mississippi State currently right now. If they don't recruit anybody else, bring in no other transfers, is worse than Washington State. No, not even close. Not okay, even close. 
I mean, right. Washington State was – uh, on average, either and the they were next able to, to run this last. offense, right? Yeah. They had cape guys, that, and these guys didn't fit his scheme. They were just guys that were just trying to make a a, a D one co- uh, college football team, right? But it, again, I mean, he started three and nine his first year, six and seven. That's his because next Washington year State was terrible. I understand that, but I, either way, I'm just saying it could take a little bit of time. I don't. Do you think state fans would be happy with six and six? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think they'd be thrilled with six and six. Why would they not? Well, I mean, they weren't this year. Hang on. You just said you thought that he would win four games and, and, and told him they need to be games. calmed down. I think they'll win six games. Easy, it's easily win six games. And you think they won't be happy with that. Wait a minute. We're having two different conversations. I don't, I don't understand what we're talking about. And now you've got me confused. I don't know what we're talking about either. <laughs> Look, I mean, because you're saying two different things, but you're contradicting yourself. I don't no, get I'm not, it. I don't, I'm, I'm not making. I'm not, fo- I'm not following your logic, and maybe it's me. Maybe everybody else listening totally understands what the hell you're saying. There is and, no and logic me. involved in this. I'm saying he could come out of the gate and only win four games, and I hope that state fans are okay with that. If he wins six, that is magnificent, because I think it's going to take time to build this roster in his like in the way that he wants it built. Like that's all I'm saying. Well, yeah, they're not going to be perfect, but can they run his offense? Yeah, that, there's no question on earth they can learn the air raid because I don't think it's a complex offense. I think its simplicity is one of its greatest things. Uh, you might be right. You might be right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to some of these other ones. We have uh, we spent 16 minutes on that one. Um, let's talk about Rocky Long stepping down at San Diego State for about two seconds here. Brady Hoke who it, here's here's what Brady Hoke did uh, since he was last at San Diego State. All right, he was only there for two years. He went 9-4 and four in 2010 and then left immediately for Michigan. Uh, after that, he was fired at Michigan in 2014. He was unemployed in 2015. 2016, he was fired as Oregon's defensive coordinator. 2017, fired as Tennessee's defensive line coach. 2018, fired by the Carolina Panthers, and then he was back as a defensive line coach at the school where he uh, second coached because he started at Ball State. Um, I am i don't know about this one. Uh, I hate to see Rocky Long leave, but he is shooting for, it, and he's like 68 years old, 60-something like that, and decided that he didn't want the administration at San Diego State to get involved in his business and tell him how to how to run his program because they wanted him to make offensive staff changes. He didn't want to fire anybody, so he just quit. And now he's reaching out to be a Power 5 defensive coordinator uh, where he will actually make more money than he was making this year, which yeah. was less than $900,000. It's uh, it's pretty crazy to think about. So San Diego State, going to be interesting uh, over the next little bit. Fresno State hired Kalen DeBoer. Uh, DeBoer was Jeff Tedford's first offense coordinator there not this past year, but the year before. And then he went to Indiana, completely turned Indiana's offense around, and now he's coming back as Fresno's head coach. Boston College hired Jeff Halfley, called this one. The AD has Ohio State ties. This was the guy. Like We, we talked about this on, on the last time that we did this. Uh, Memphis, we, we haven't talked about them since, but Ryan Silverfield is the guy. He hired Mike McIntyre as his defensive coordinator. Uh, they get Brady White back. They get DeMonte Coxey back. Uh, great recruiter, player support. He's never been a coordinator, though. Uh, what do you think about him? What do you think about uh, Mike McIntyre coming in? Uh, Mike McIntyre is a grown-up in the room that'll help, uh, that could help him with any issues that he has uh, being a first-time head coach. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Um, I mean, the players do love him. Man, that that only goes so far. At some point in time, you have to be able to outcoach the other guys, or you have to be able to out recruit the other guys. And I, I, think he I can don't recruit. Um, getting McIntyre in there is big. Uh, yeah, that, no, I I completely I agree that McIntyre is a massive hire. But but I'm but I I worry about this one. I, I think I think the administration went two for two, hitting with Fuente, Fuente putting the program on the map, and then hitting with Norvell, and then. You know, I just I don't know that the the train continues to run. Now, are they going to be 
good. I think they'll still be good. I think they'll yeah. still be exciting. But are they going to compete for the American anymore? Man, I just don't. I don't think so. I think UCF is still really good. I think Cincinnati, as long as Luke Fickle is there, is going to be something to reckon with. I think Houston, Dana Holgerson is not going to stay down long. Um, they, they're going to be just fine and tough to deal with. And as long as uh, Willie Fritz and Will Hall stay down in Tulane, now Will Hall got a couple of OC uh, – calls yeah recently um and uh as long as those guys stay down there then um then then Tulane's gonna be something to deal with and I think Memphis everybody else is going a little forward I think Memphis might have taken a step back they so I know Memphis wanted to uh they they were using continuity as the reason they were making this higher uh I don't know if you can do that anymore I I, I hate that concept man I really do like you we see all the time like kids get all pissed off whenever somebody gets fired and like half of old Miss's team was like, I'm quitting. I'm, I want to go to the transfer portal right now. The day that Matt Luke was fired. And then they bring in Lane Kip and everybody's like, Oh, go man, I, I guess I'll stay. I guess I'll stick around. <laughs> oh, you guess, you guess you will because they brought in somebody that's a thousand times better than the guy they left. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, I know you like the guy, but we're not here to be friends. We're here to try to win college football games. Okay. Yeah. Stop being an idiot. This is why you don't let 18-year-old kids, 19, 20-year-old kids make decisions for your program. Well, it's it's like Arizona almost hired Ken Neomatalola uh, just a couple of years ago. And yeah. uh, what, what's the – oh, Khalil Tate is the one that tweeted out, like, I didn't come to Arizona to run triple option. Yep. And so they, they nixed the hire. It's like, what are you doing? Like, I mean, it just – it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Colorado State hired Steve Adazio – we haven't commented on this one, I don't believe. Uh, not a great track record of success. I mean, he did pretty well at Boston College. What are you talking about? He had a pretty good record at Boston College, considering he was at Boston College. Yeah, but it, he never won more than seven games, and he only did that a hand like a couple of times. So, you go up to BC and win seven games, Gary. <laughs> All I'm saying is, it's not it, his overall record is not stupendous, right? However, the other side of this is. And what, look, there's a reason why he got fired, right? So, I mean, I'm not crazy here. Because they I, want to be bigger than they think they are. That's the I, problem. I do agree with that. But, but, that, but that has State. nothing to do with what they do. And the overall record stuff has to stop. People who are like, Greg Schiano's overall record is, uh, he's the winningest coach in Rucker history. He he took him to an Orange Bowl. Yes, it took him three or four years to, to do it. They were terrible. But then once he got him on the train, he got him going. Adazio took over a, a mess. Yes, he lost a whole lot of games when he first got there. Yeah. Then he got him winning. And winning seven games a year at BC is a hell of a run. A hell the, of a the run. The fact that he got this team to to win six games was pretty outstanding. I don't believe he should have been fired. I think he's um, a difficult guy to deal with, and I understand that. And so maybe the administration didn't want to deal with that. I get that. Man, I don't want I don't know why they fired the guy, okay? I, I agree. But I, so I know here's why I brought this up. There. Here's here's why I brought this up. So Colorado State hires him. He has no uh no coaching experience west of Indiana, right? How funny is it that Urban Meyer was the one sitting in those meetings and Adazio was the one that ends up getting the job? Well, yeah, we knew that was gonna happen. It was gonna be an urban guy. Oh yeah, that's. I mean, you hire Urban. He, you're, he's gonna he's gonna place his friend. That's all he does. Oh, a hundred percent. No, I don't. I don't hate the hire though. By the way, I mean, no, I think Adazio's a good guy. And yeah. the idea that he he's never coached west of Indiana. What does that mean, Gary? It's, it's so some of these some of these jobs are very. Mike Leach has never coached anywhere. He, yeah, I guess he has been Kentucky. But anyway, yeah. go on. I mean, go well, on. He, he coached at Valdosta. He coached. I mean, go, go has on. Over the place. Um, but yeah, the Adazio hire like. You know me. I've said it a billion times. If he's a star, he's a star. Like, P.J. Fleck had not coached at Minnesota, uh, like anywhere close to Minnesota before. So, you know, is what it is. I, I think. But you're uh, Colorado State. You're not getting a star. You're trying to get – if you want a star, then you're hiring a young guy that nobody knows about. See, that's – And you're hoping you hit Pater with him. But if you want a, an adult in the room that can bring stability to your program and, 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 and not in, an embarrassment every year – then you hire a guy like Adazio. Yeah. And and so they chose they chose to say we would like an adult in the room because yeah. hiring the young unproven person is not working for us. 
uh, off of that, FAU hired Willie Taggart, uh, another retread coach. Uh, Taggart couldn't really recruit to Florida State. He had major problems doing that for whatever reason. Made no sense to me. Uh, so the question is, will he be able to recruit to FAU? Uh, I think that he will. But the biggest thing here is Florida Atlantic has shown that they want the name. They want the name that people are going to be interested in. They are going to check Florida Atlantic scores to see how this guy is doing. And they got it. Do you think? Uh, I, I, okay. You, if you think people are going to wake up on Sunday morning to see how Willie Taggart did. Uh, who who else in this recruiting or in this uh, coaching cycle was going to bring that? Well, nobody, but I think a young, unproven coach would have possibly brought that in a couple of months. I mean, if he wins right out of the gate, but it, with but this, you you brought back a guy that that nobody is excited about or thinking about outside of people in Florida or around that program or in that conference. Yeah. I mean, not not one person outside of that conference is going to give one thought about FAU or FAU. Uh, you might be all. right. I, I think that the national media will be kind of watching this to see if he's able to be successful there. Where he zero wasn't able chance. To be. Until, now, if he wins five games in a row, then, yeah, people will start paying attention. But if he starts out three and two, nobody will know that he's existed in, in six months. He uh, will you, be forgotten in all of college football. Uh, you might be right. You might be right. You, uh, you ready to move into the NFL? Yep. Let's do that. Let's see, 31 minutes, 36 seconds. I keep writing these times down. Uh, let's start off with the Cowboys. They fire Jason Garrett. They hire former Packers head coach Mike McCarthy. Uh, when all the dust settled, I think this ended up being a pretty good hire. Uh, he's got good experience. Uh, I don't think that he was the problem in Green Bay. And the fact that he has sat out for a year, studied the the new trends, the things that are working in the NFL and whatnot, uh, didn't go grab a, uh, you know, a job with a TV network, something like that. He actually worked on what he was doing. I think this could work out. I mean, behind Bill Belichick, it's McCarthy and John Harbaugh have the second most, like they're tied for 10 playoff wins. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, if you want to say that he underachieved with Aaron Rodgers, okay. Uh, but nobody else has done any better with any of the other ones, Drew Brees or or any other quarterback. So, I I think this was a good hire. If you wanted a guy with experience that can take the team that you've got and take them to a Super Bowl quickly, which is what Jerry Jones wants, uh, you don't go out and get the unproven commodity, which would be Lincoln Riley, whatever. You go out and get the guy that's been there. I think it's a good move. Uh, I, it's okay. I don't hate it, but I don't know that it's I don't know that it's going to be great. I, and I don't know that it's going to be great. I just I, it, looking at it from the Jerry Jones perspective. And from, you know, I've got several friends that are, who doesn't have friends that are Cowboys fans? Um, You know, I I think when everything finally calmed down, at first it was, oh God, what are we doing? Like they do this all the time, da 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 da. And then, of course, once the hiring cycle kind of slows down and, and gets done, it's like, okay, like you could go out and get Eric Bienemy. You could go out and get, you know, whoever. You could get McDaniels, Josh McDaniels. Uh, and you don't really know what you're going to get. With this, you kind of have an idea, and, you know, I think uh, I think a big part of this is Jerry can still run that program, right? Like yes, if- he's got another yes man. He's got somebody that's not going to get in his way, that's not going to care that Jerry's press conference is longer than his, um, all of that stuff. Is there, do we know anything about, so I know he's bringing Mike Nolan with him, uh, have we figured out anything on the uh, offensive coordinator front? Or is it yeah, Mike they're, McCarthy? They're keeping, they're, keeping, they're keeping what they got. Okay, so so Kellen Moore decided to stay there instead of going to Washington. Well, now, I don't know if Kellen Moore decided that. I know they were trying to okay, get so, him to decide to stay there. All right, so that, that looks like it's going to be the, the next thing, but this will be McCarthy's offense. And so, uh, Next up, the Panthers fired Ron Rivera. They hired Matt Rule. Did you see his press conference? Uh, a little bit. Holy mackerel, this was phenomenal. Uh, the the video of him talking about why he left Baylor for the Panthers. It, he was, I wanted to move to the NFL. I love this football. It's the greatest sport on earth. It's all these individuals coming together as a team, as brothers. And I, man, 
I was ready to run through a brick wall right there just watching the press conference. He's uh, an outstanding coach. I mean, he is, is an phenomenal. outstanding coach. I love the guy. I absolutely love the guy. That I, I don't know that the Panthers. I mean, he was he was up there like just under Leach as just a coach that I that I just love. Um, Tepper giving him the contract that he did. Uh, he had to pay him that one because Baylor was paying him just astronomical money. Um, but I think it's worth it. Like you get a guy that is a developer of young men, and and I think this is definitely good for them. I mean, it's and he he didn't give him a chance to go to the Giants really. Now I mean, it, there's conflicting reports about did Rule call the Giants and give them a chance to match the offer, and the Giants said no. Um, I I I think the Giants tried to hire his staff the way the Jets tried to hire his staff. I could believe that. I could believe because that. there are reports already out that the Giants are trying to hire the staff for Judge, which we'll get to next, I'm sure. But uh, Matt Rule is a guy. So he started out linebackers coach at Albright, defensive line coach at Buffalo, defensive line coach at UCLA, special teams and linebackers coach at Western Carolina. Uh, associate head coach, special teams linebackers coach at Western Carolina. He was the running game coordinator there as well in the next season in 2005. 2006, he goes to Temple as a D-line coach. And then in 2007, he moves from D-line coach to quarterbacks coach and recruiting coordinator. And then he moves to the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. And then he was the offensive coordinator, tight ends coach, and recruiting coordinator at Temple before he took an assistant offensive line job with the Giants. And then he became the head coach of Temple and then Baylor, and now he's with the Panthers. He's been everywhere and done everything. But imagine a college football program today moving their defensive line coach to be their quarterback's coach. And all he had ever coached before that, really, was defense. And they move him to quarterback's coach. That is you. You always hire the smartest guy in the room. Oh yeah, to do the hardest job, and and if you knew that this guy is smarter than everybody else in here, he can figure it out. I can find any D line coach off of any tree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I mean, it just tells you the level of his intelligence and the respect that he has from the people that he works with and what they think of his intelligence. I think that this is a home run. Um, yeah. I do too. I, I, we could be proven wrong, but I seriously doubt it. I mean, it's going to come down. He's got to got to have a trigger man in the NFL. This is not college where you can you can take an okay quarterback, put him in a weird scheme, and and hope that you can outsmart everybody with smoke and mirrors. The NFL doesn't get outsmarted with smoke and mirrors. You have to have a trigger man. Now you are a hundred percent right about that. The Redskins. Uh, speaking of trigger men. Uh, they fired Jay Gruden after week five. They end up hiring Ron Rivera. I think smart move. I think Ron Rivera is a really good coach, and he will be able to figure out what to do with this defense. I think he will get that entire organization put together. Uh, Bruce Allen is no longer running the show there. Um, I, this is going to be interesting to see what he like if he can turn around the Redskins because they have been a doormat for years now, right? <laughs> Now you want to talk about a guy that just needed an adult in the room. And and hopefully this is strong. I mean, it seems Dan Snyder has said, you're the guy. You're They don't have a GM right now. Rivera is going to hire the GM. And they are going to work together to put together the 56-man roster, 53-man roster. And Rivera will have all say in the 46-man roster. Um, and so uh, it, it's just one of those situations where – Dan has seemingly given all of power and influence to Ron. Now that's something that he's done in the past and then taken it back really quickly. Um, But I think drastic improvements are going to happen because of this hire. I think they could get good fast, really, really fast with this. Brought in Jack Del Rio to run the defense. Jack Del Rio is a former NFL head coach, not a bad head coach, also a guy I like a lot, and uh, and I think's a, a really good football coach. So I, I think we've got a couple of old school good football guys in the room, but they're also pretty smart guys, and their players worship them. They need that because right now they got a lot of players that don't want anything to do with that program. No, you're right about that. 
Uh, the Giants fired Pat Shermer. Uh, they hire Joe Judge, New England wide receivers coach and special teams coordinator. Um, what can how how can you sell me on this? Yeah, you can. Okay, you can. And, and they're keeping Gettleman. This guy, around. this guy was the wide receivers coach for the Patriots for the last two years. Okay, for the last yeah, two years. You know what he told and Gettleman? Did you see the the interview with Gettleman? Um, where he like Gettleman said that they knew they were hiring him because he told them his philosophy is to. And I quote, run the ball and stop the run. And that builds a physical team. How is that how you ace your interview? Like, I, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I had, to, this, I had to throw that in. This, this, this guy was the receivers coach at New England for the last two years. And I watch every snap of every Patriots game for the last 17 years, 15 years, something of that nature. And... <laughs> I'm going to tell you, our wide receivers haven't looked worse in the 20 year run that I've been watching the Patriots, 25 year run, than they look right now. They don't know how to run the routes. They're in the wrong spot all the time. They they don't seem to be working really hard to be where they're at. This guy was on John Cohen's list, and he wanted him over Mike Leach because he's a Mississippi State guy. I, I just don't, I just don't understand this. I just don't know why people wanted to hire this guy for a job. Do they just think because he worked in the same room as Bill that Bill's just genius, just rubbed off on him, like 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 his stink? I don't, I don't get that. I just don't understand this. But I also don't think a whole lot of Dave Gettleman at all. Oh no, I mean, I don't think this guy knows what the hell he's doing. No. No, I don't no think idea. Gettleman made this hire, to be honest. I, th- I think the ownership made the hire. And maybe Judge is a hell of a guy. And maybe he'll work out to be a really good coach. But I know this. They're bringing in Jason Garrett, and they're bringing in Freddie Kitchens to interview for offensive coordinator jobs. Okay? And 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 Garrett, Garrett hasn't touched an offense in 10 years. Garrett would be light years ahead of anything positive that Freddie Kitchens could bring to this program. I agree. It's a shit show. Yeah. Yeah. It's they're it's turning into the jets. It's just like who, who can be a bigger disaster in the state of New York right now in the city of New York. Uh, here is Joe judge's uh, resume. He was a grad assistant at Mississippi state from 05 to 07. 05 is when he worked with Freddie kitchens at Mississippi state. Uh, kitchens was, I believe a tight ends coach at that point. Uh, he moved on to be a linebackers coach for Birmingham Southern. Uh, in 2008, he was a special teams assistant, uh, not even on the field at Alabama in 2009 through 2011. Uh, got two rings there, went to be a special teams assistant with the New England Patriots in 2000, uh, 2012 to 2014. He was the special teams coordinator from 2015 through 2018. He was the special teams coordinator and wide receivers coach in 2019. Uh, and now he is the head coach of the New York Giants. Um, I mean, he he must have wowed somebody in that room because I just I don't see how this qualifies him to be a head coach. Uh, Pat even- Shermer is so much a better football coach than this guy. Not that Pat Shermer is great, but Pat Shermer's been doing this for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, now you brought up Kitchens, the Browns fired him, and. Where do they go now? Do you? Uh, yeah, well, they I'm get sure the they, pick of the litter because they're the only job left. Yeah, that's uh, so. That's what I'm curious about. Uh, have you? I haven't seen a whole lot about it. They seem to um, be saying quiet. I, if I had a hierarchy of of who they want, I had a list here earlier. Do you think that they're they're waiting around for the Ravens to get done this weekend? Um, but like maybe if they're hiring Greg Roman. Or something like that. Is that why it no. got quiet? No, no. They're interviewing all these guys. Okay. Um, I think Josh McDaniels is probably one. I think Jim Schwartz is probably two. Um, would would Jim Schwartz work? Yeah, yeah. I I I, I wouldn't mind Jim Schwartz. I wouldn't mind Jim Schwartz. He um. Where did he coach before? Did he coach uh, the Lions? Uh, yeah, he was at the Lions. Um, they've interviewed Brian Dable. Man, I don't know that I would hate that. I, th- I think really? Brian's a really smart coach, and he's going to come. I, he's obviously doesn't have the pedigree that Josh and 
and Schwartz have, but uh, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't hate him at all. I, th- I think he's proven that he is. Well, here what I like about him is he's flexible. Okay, yeah. he he doesn't care what the roster looks like. He'll he's going to make an offense to what he's got. All right, he's a lot like Greg Roman in the sense of oh, these are the players I got. We got to change the offense. Oh, now these are the players I got because somebody went hurt or somebody left in free agency or a trade or whatever. All right, now I got to revamp the offense again. But but he's adaptable. He's flexible. He's not stuck in this rigid way of how to do things. I think that is true genius, by the way. I don't think somebody who has a set pattern and a set method of doing things and they can only do things in that specific way is always the right genius. I think the guy that's the most flexible and can do anything with anybody and just get positivity out of it is the best thing. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, and, and it wouldn't be, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they're waiting to, to interview Roman. He's obviously going to be on a list of coaches. If it's not this year, it'll be next year. Um, uh, it, it's just a matter of, do they want to make a decision before then or not? And then who, who wants this job? That's the biggest thing is, would Jim Shorts leave Philadelphia for this job? Like there was a report out that Josh McDaniel said Cleveland's actually his dream job. Now, a lot of coaches, and that Josh might be one of them. There's kind of there's a there's a small Catholic college called William uh, uh, John Carroll, I think. Yeah, yeah, John. Well, John Carroll and, High School, but uh, no, there's a John Carroll. There's a John Carroll. It's I'm pretty sure it's John Carroll, and uh, it's in Cleveland, and I, I've. I have some really good friends that went there and uh, it's surprisingly like the coaching Mecca, like Don shoot, like seven hall of fame coaches all came from there. Okay. So it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of weird that this little private school and, in, in college college in, in Cleveland is, is where like some of the best coaches in, in the world have ever come from. Um, I think Josh McDaniels might, might've went to school there. I could have just made that up, but I thought his name was on the list of coaches that came from there. If that's true, then Cleveland very well could be his his dream job. I don't know that working for the Haslam's after working for the Crafts is going to be something I'd want to do. But Let's maybe see. he's strong enough. Maybe he's got the pedigree to walk in the door. And he's the only one out of the list of guys, by the way, that would have the pedigree to walk in and say, if you want me, you get me. But yeah. you get me in my system, and we're going to do things my way. And I'm going to need, I'm just going to need a little bit of room. I want you to hire me. I want this job, but I want room to do this job my way. Now I will keep you guys in the loop, and me and the analytics department and the and the personnel department will all talk. But at the end of the day, the 46 man roster is mine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I and see. I think I think that would probably be if I was the Browns, that would be the biggest hold up because they want somebody who's going to want to work with them because they want to be very hands-on with all the decisions of everything. And I just don't know that you're going to find many coaches to do that. Now, if you're a first time head coach, if you're a, if you're a, you know, a Brian Dable, then, then yeah, you, you'd probably take those options because it's one of 32 jobs. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, you were Don Shula, Greg Roman, Josh McDaniels, all, Oh, uh, Josh McDaniels was on there. Okay. Yeah. I thought uh, I thought he was one. There's several more it, and there's like past coaches, right? It was, it was surprising that that I that Greg Roman was on there. Um yeah. I haven't found a whole lot about like Hall of Fame coaches and whatnot yet. Yeah. But it's probably a weird search to find, but anyway. See. Oh, I see Tom Arth. Uh let's see, David Caldwell, uh London Fletcher. Maybe it's not Hall of Famers, then. Maybe it was just a bunch of NFL guys. Brian Polian, Chris Polian. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 John Shula, Tom Telesco, a general manager of the Chargers. Yep. Ken O'Keefe, quarterbacks coach, University of Iowa. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. Just I mean, to be like some small Catholic college that yeah. has like, you know, 1,700 students. Yeah, Today, 1,700 students. Yeah, that's. That's they could nuts. be bigger than that, but I can't think it's much bigger than no, that. No, it's it's tiny. It's tiny. Yeah. Uh, to wrap up this uh, this go round, how did Doug Maroney and Dan Quinn keep their jobs? Well, Dan Quinn did really good at the end of the season. Well, yeah, I they, think, they went seven and nine overall, yeah. but he started one and seven, and then played 
just a uh, an awful schedule. And not, well, not I mean, awful, they, like, they went into New, New Orleans, beat the hell out of the Saints. Yeah, they did that, but then they got beat by the Saints at home later on. Like it, it evened itself out as far as that goes. But everything else was wins over the Bucks. Wins over. Now they did get a big win over the Forty ers but you, I was at, about to say they point, beat the Saints and the Forty ers at the end of the year. That's pretty good. Yeah, but they went one and seven to start. Like I, I really thought that he was gone if they didn't make the playoffs this year. And yeah, he kind of won his way back in. But I is there anybody you'd rather have over him that's out of these list of coaches available looking for a job? I mean, yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, I I think I'd probably rather have Roman there. I, I, so you take a shot with a guy that's never been a head coach before in his life. Dan and Quinn his is only a, and his only his I would, only I would claim to fame is coaching two very uniquely talented quarterbacks that Matt Ryan is not. Well, three. Three. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick, uh, uh, Tyrod, and Lamar Jackson. But they're all very different than what Matt Ryan does. But look, it, it, give me Eric bien Give me Josh McDaniels. Give me – like, you tell me McDaniels wouldn't go to Atlanta? I mean, that's – I think that you you take a shot with something else because obviously this isn't working. They hired Dan Quinn because he's a defensive guy, and the defense has sucked every year. Like it's not like it got better this year. They just scored more points than other teams. Like it's good that they're scoring more points. I was just surprised that they kept him around again. It, obviously, I think this is this is the hot seat year. This is the make or break season. Um, but I mean, maybe I'm wrong. And and about Maroney. I, I thought when when they got rid of Coughlin a couple of weeks before the season was done, that that was all she wrote for the rest of that staff. And they decided, uh, you know, Khan decided, ah, we're we're going to wait and and figure it out after this. Um, yeah, that that one did surprise me. That one actually, I, I I'm shocked that he's still got a job, but I don't think he's a bad coach. And I could just be wrong about that, but I don't I don't know if there's anything wrong with him. That roster is insanely flawed in the way that team has been built over the last several years. Coughlin, I, I thought Coughlin was a really good football man, and maybe he is, and maybe the game just passed him by, or maybe he just, I don't know, half-assed stroked out and didn't know what he was doing. But, I mean, he took a team that was pretty damn close to beating the pass to go to a Super Bowl, and now that defense is a shell of itself. What 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 happened? What did he do? You got me. I mean, I, I felt like it was coaching, but it, it's almost like the the egos in the locker room got to be a little. No, that's that's crazy. not coaching. No, no, no. That, but it, that's partly coaching uh, because you got to be able to to get everybody on the same level. Like you can have all the talent in the world. You saw what happened with the Browns this year. So it, it that's that's on the coach. We, like it, it, call me crazy. Like I, it's it, the coach has to maintain that stuff. Yes, but they don't. They didn't have. They didn't have the talent that the Browns had. I mean, Freddie Kitchens is an idiot. I mean, I he's agree. just an idiot. Yeah, I, I but agree. Marone is obviously not an idiot. Marone's a sharp guy. Marone's a smart guy, and he's been around the league for a long time. Yeah, he has. He has. I mean, he. You know, I. I think he can salvage this. I really do. I don't know that they win the division or compete for a wild card next year, but I. I like Jacksonville to be better. But I. I they gotta. They gotta come up with an offensive identity. I don't think they have one. Nope. And I, I think I would sell, I would sell Foles, and I would build around uh, uh, Minshew. Uh, yeah, Minshew Gardner, and and at least see what you got in the kid, and, and build an offense around him and his skill set. And if it doesn't work, then you punt on it and you draft somebody next year. Yeah. But if it works, then. You got a cheap quarterback for a couple of years that you can and, build and you around, and you, you, yeah. but you got to get an offensive identity. They don't know what they want to be. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and that's it, the biggest problem they've got. I and, okay. and a lot of that, what? Well, that's falls on Coughlin because they did know what they wanted to be before Coughlin got there. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, the very year before he got there, they knew exactly what they wanted to be. Don't turn the ball over, Blake, and we can win every football game. Yep. I mean, we'll win the damn thing six to nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. And they or were, they thirteen were to nothing, direction. and we'll we'll get turnovers, and that's how we'll score. Yeah, thirteen to six, thirteen to seven, whatever. I mean, yeah, well, you know, and and that was their identity, and it worked pretty well. And then Coughlin took over, made a couple of tweaks here, pissed off the wrong people there, and bada bing, bada boom, they got nothing. I mean, that defense is is gone to garbage. You are 
dead on. You know what's weird, left though? Jalen Ramsey left there. He he isn't doing crap. He's he's getting torched oh, he, he out in L.A. Well, I mean, he was getting torched in Jacksonville, you know, early this yeah, year. Yeah, but I thought it was because he didn't want to be there. Uh, yeah, instead he goes to uh, to the Rams. and So now the Rams either are out the first-round pick, all that. Out, they're out the first-round pick already. Now do, are you out the first-round pick and you cut your nose off to spite your face? And you pay the man twenty million dollars a year. Didn't they sign him to an extension when they when they brought him out there? I don't know that they signed him to the extension. I think they have to sign him to the extension or let him walk, and you just lost that first round pick for nothing. Now I could be wrong. I haven't checked his contract or looked into that very closely. I just know he didn't play very well. That's interesting. I'll have to I'll have to double check on that. I don't know, but yeah, I don't know what the Rams would do. I mean, this is. It's a bad spot. They need to hire a GM. They need, they need a, somebody who's going to come in and have an have an offensive or a defense have an identity for the team, not offense or defensive. Who, who's going to have an identity? And he's going to give the team an identity and and say this is what we want to be. This is who we are. And this is what we want to be, and build it that way. And the pieces you've got that fit that you keep. The pieces you don't, you send down the road and you get them. He is. Uh, let's see. He is on contract with the Rams through next year. He's an unrestricted free agent in 2021. So, yeah, so they didn't extend him then. Hadn't extended him yet. So, so. they get a year and a half. They get 18 months out of him yep. for the first-round pick and they if they don't him, give him more money. They owe him uh, $13 million next year, and that is a cap hit of $13.7 And there's a real chance if they don't extend him, he won't play that. He'll just sit out. Yeah, you're right. And say, no thanks. That's insane. That is so insane. All right. Uh, anything else that you uh, that you can think of? No, we hit? this went longer than we thought. Let's go. Yeah, it did. It did. But it, sometimes you're going to have that. A lot to discuss. Uh, WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. Go check it out. All of our podcasts, previews, picks, videos, social media platforms, etc. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. TunicaTravel.com is the website for more information. If there's nothing else, my brother, I will talk to you again on Sunday evening. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.